Let's start with Omid Scobie, this disgusting little person who has launched a book and gone on a book tour. And you tell me, but it appears that in no version of this book, other than the Dutch version over in Amsterdam in Holland, does he out the identity of the alleged royal racists who Meghan told Oprah the royals were very concerned about the skin color of the baby. She was mocked for this assertion. and uh, But in the Dutch version, he names them. And I'm just going to tell you, Piers Morgan is reporting, he did it, that it was allegedly uh, King Charles and Kate Middleton. And we have no uh, confirmation of this, but this is a news story. That's what he's saying. Omid Scobie's Dutch version said about who were the alleged people raising concerns. And now he's denying it. And he's trying, as I understand it, to blame the translators over in Holland. Am I up to speed? You are up to speed. You tell no lies, Megan. Um, before we get into Omid, I just want to be among many people, I'm sure, to congratulate you on Wednesday's debate oh. and just how incredible it was to see that, yes, these candidates can be controlled and contained and corralled. It just seemed to take apparently three women led by you to do it. It's incredible to watch. Um, so the Omid stuff is so fascinating. Now, of course, um, in line sort of with the Harry and Meghan, it's never their fault. It's never their fault. It's always somebody else's. Although he would have us believe he wrote this book independently with no help from Camp Montecito. And I will tell you, having slogged through that book, the only two people who come across as worthy and good and only well-intended are the beleaguered Harry and Meghan. Everybody else is a monster. And the way in which he writes about Camilla in particular is vile. And it really sounds like it could have only come from one specific source. Uh, you know, he's got multiple passages in which Camilla's underwear is strewn everywhere after liaisons with then Prince Charles. I mean, it's utter gutter trash. Um, so then to sort of say, OK, well, I wrote this book. It's all mine, independent. Uh, but except for, oh, this horrible thing that got out. I'm sorry to say it's a mistranslation. You cannot mistranslate something that isn't there to begin with. And the reason it's not in the UK version or the US version, but particularly the UK version, is their libel laws are so strict. And there is a line in the book where he specifically says to the reader, I am not naming the alleged royal racists because of libel laws. I am not permitted to do so. And the last thing I'll say about this is when Harry and Meghan were first peddling their tales of racist woe to Oprah Winfrey. Wait, 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 wait. I know where you're going. I know where you're going. I'm going to play the sot and then you take it out of the back end. Here's the original claim. In those months when I was pregnant, all around this same time, so we have in tandem the conversation of he won't be given security. He's not going to be given a title. and also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. What? And <laughs> who, who is having that conversation with you? What? So, um, there is a conversation. Hold up, hold up. There's Stop several right now. There are several conversations. There's a about conversation it. with you, with Harry, about how dark your baby is going to be, potentially, and what that would mean or look like. Ooh. And you're not going to tell me who had the conversation. I think that would be very damaging to them. Okay. So. Now it's now we know who it allegedly was, or at least we think we know. And it's everyone's doing the who, what, what? Anyway, continue your thought. Well, I mean, again, just to, to rewatching that is so rich because <laughs> we saw Harry 
back in January when he was peddling his memoir say to, I believe it was Tom Bradby. Well, Megan never said they were racist. Did we say they were racist? But to watch her, I mean, she looks like she's testifying at the Hague. She looks like she's testifying to war crimes. Like this is the gravest, most important discussion. So let's parse this, shall we? Right, Megan? It's not with her, but it's with Harry. It was one person, but now it's two. When Harry joins the conversation, he contradicts Megan's versions of events. It wasn't while she was pregnant. It was while they were dating. And, you know, my favorite observer and uh, of, of, of this entire sort of controversy was Chris Rock, who in his stand up from last year just went to town and, and, and was like, this is not racist stuff. This is in-law stuff. Even yeah. black people want to know what's the baby going to look like. That's it. <laughs> That's it. I kind of, I but- love though that it's out of the bag now, really, because I do think that was the last weapon in their arsenal. This thing that they were holding over the Royals, they have nothing else. She got a whole award from Gloria Steinem for this, for and, and from one of the Kennedys for speaking truth to power, holding the racist royal family to account. Remember, I believe that's what she was in New York for when she had her fake near-death experience with the paparazzi not chasing her, right? Like that was, oh, yeah. that's, yeah. she's getting that award. Enter through the Hertz rental car office, if you will. Um, <laughs> I suffered through that event, that excuse for an award ceremony um oh. and you know it w- but it was fantastic because i spoke to so many people who were there like these sort of died in the wool ardent feminists glorious steinem admirers not a single person said they were there to see megan not a single person cared what she had to say by the end of the night people couldn't wait to get out of there and you know the 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 story about that quote unquote high speed car chase in Midtown Manhattan, which is anyone who knows or has been to Manhattan, is logistically physically impossible. Uh, I do believe was sort of cooked up because there was such little reaction to this meaningless award that she was given, and and she what she had to say meant even less than that. You know what it was to me? It was it was like I'm going to make a weird analogy, but it works for me. It was like Alec Murdoch, you know, when he he had done a bunch a bunch of bad stuff. He had, um, you know, been stealing from his company. He'd been embezzling from clients to the tune of millions. He may or may not have had something to do with uh, somebody's death, even before before his wife and his son. All these things, and then they say the real reason he wound up killing his wife and his son was because he wanted sympathy. He wanted to change the narrative around himself, not accusing her of killing anybody. I'm just saying the car chase lie was because she wanted us to feel sorry for her to take the heat off of all the terrible things they'd done. No, 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 I'm not a bad person. See, people are out to kill me. You see, it's evidenced by this terrible car chase. It was a lie meant to generate sympathy. And to those of us who have lived in New York, it was such an obvious lie. And now they're lying again. This is her chief spokesperson. This guy, Omid Scobie, from what we can tell, Maureen is close with this pair, has been, like I said, their stenographer. And so the only reason he would know those names is from her, from them. Exactly. I mean, as he writes in this book, Those names were disclosed in private correspondence, in letter writing, and anybody who would memorialize anything, be it digital or physical, and give it to Meghan Markle, you know, beware. Mm. So those names were contained only in those letters, right, between Meghan Markle and then Prince Charles. And so who would have access to those documents? You know, it's not like that leak came from Buckingham Palace. We know that. Mm-hmm. So that leaves only one. I mean, you don't have to be it, it, you don't have to be a detective to figure this out. It's yeah. and, the, and their lies become ever less sophisticated and believable. Um, but I do think that they are pathologically, congenitally incapable of 
taking any sort of blame, of expressing any sort of remorse. I mean, you want to get ahead of this. How about you deny that it's Charles, that it's Kate Middleton? Right. Um, Come out and say that. Yeah. Say you're sorry that this is happening, that these people don't deserve this. If Harry was telling the truth and he and Meghan don't believe the royals are racist, and in fact, Harry vehemently defended Lady Susan Hussey, who that month around January, I don't know if you remember, but there was this event at Buckingham Palace and she was accused of saying horribly racist things and touching a a Black woman's hair. Uh, and, And Harry said in this broadcast, Megan and I love her. So which is it? So let's have it. Let's have it. Exactly. So that's the thing. If they, if it wasn't Charles and Kate, if she did not tell Omid Scobie that those were the two, then where is she? Everybody, it's not like this is some rando reporter who has no connection to Megan and Harry. This is their guy. And now he's basically admitting without admitting it did come from his manuscript, obviously, because the Dutch translator has no freaking clue who Meghan Markle's accusing of racism. Why was she just going to make up names? I guess it was Charles and Kate. Um, And now in the latest news, he's saying he admitted that the translators in the Netherlands were sent, quote, an early manuscript that was never updated with the final version poured over by lawyers. Uh, and then he excused it by saying, oh, his his book was written at, quote, lightning speed. So very clearly, he put the names in there. He gave the names, or his publisher did, to this Dutch uh, publisher, and they printed it. That's how this obviously went down. But the Sussexes, who have had so much to say about everything, Maureen, nothing, bumpkiss. They're totally silent. It's the Christmas and holiday season, everyone. Time for gift giving, parties with friends and family, and getting compliments everywhere you go, looking years younger, thanks to Genucel. From now through Christmas, Genucel's most popular package is more than 70% off at Genucel.com. Treat yourself and a loved one to the absolute best skincare in the world. See those troubling forehead, wrinkles, fine lines, skin redness, pesky bags and puffiness, and even a sagging jawline disappear with Genucel's most popular collection. With its immediate effects product, see results in less than 12 hours, guaranteed, or you get your money back. Plus, included in every one of their most popular packages is a free hyaluronic acid serum. Totally great. You need this, especially this time of year, for skin hydration that will restore your youthful appearance. Visit genucel.com slash MK60 right now, and you just enter my special promo, MK60, to get an additional 10% off your entire order. Every order today, instantly upgraded to free express shipping. Genucel.com slash MK60. That's G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash MK60. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.